Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias from the Automator, and uh, today we're going to talk about, I should say today, but it was actually yesterday, but we're doing an intro now, uh, to talk about a big push in programming community for test-driven development. And Isaias was showing this, we had a, a call with a client, and it was really interesting of what they're doing, uh, but the question is like, why, you know, why are we doing this? Well, hey, if, you know, kind of the theory is, if you're a professional, shouldn't we be working like professionals? <laughs> Definitely. And actually, um, the reason why this is, it is not like a totally new movement. It has been for a few years, but it is gaining a little bit of traction, especially because of what you're saying, because more people are actually developing software professionally. And we're saying like, hey, in accounting, you have double booking, right? Which is you're doing the same thing twice, right? Test-driven development does something similar because what you're doing is that you create tests for your code first. You do the tests first. Like, what are your expected results? What am I expecting this function to do in this situation and in that situation? Like, for example, if I pass numbers to these functions or if I pass text to this function, how should it behave? So I say, well, if I pass text, it should do this. If I pass numbers, it should do that. So I'm making the tests first. And then I start coding the function, but with the test there. So you're doing the same thing twice, technically, but that means that you're doing not only code that is already proven to be working, but if you make changes later on, you just rerun the tests and verify if something broke because of the test that you did. So you're doing something a little bit more stable. So that is basically what test-driven development is all about. Um, and yeah, we're going to just, so, I'm just going to show a little example of what yeah, that looks we'll, like. We'll show you what it is. We're going to also discuss why. So stick around to understand when you should be considering doing stuff like this and the why yeah, you'd yeah. be doing it in particular situations. What I'd love you to do is tell us about a time in the chat here when you've made one tiny change to some code you got and had really crazy consequences that you weren't expecting show up, right? And that's what this test-driven stuff can really help identify. Don't forget to uh, like the video, it really helps us out, and subscribe. Right, so one of the things with testing is you create the test first before creating the function. This is exactly what I did here. So first of all, I grab a, uh, a variable and put what I'm expecting. That's the, that's the key part. This is what I want out at the end of whatever I'm going to do. This is what I want out. Then I make an assertion. Okay, when I call this function with this type, it has to come back with that. Yeah, if correct. it doesn't come back with that, you're not doing it right. And I did that for each function. So I say like, okay, now when I call the convert function with this type, it has to come back with that. And, and I'm just making sure it looks like that. And I could make more assertions like Y unit, and I could add more assertions and all of them must be true. After I have my assertion, so I just create this part, then I go to my file and I create my convert method. And when I have that file, I create my code for it and return it. So. As I did the test first, and then I create the code, I always know that my code is going to work. So if I run my test right now, I'm just going to go ahead and grab these few links because that's what I'm using for testing. I copy this into my clipboard. And if I go ahead and run my tests, I just run them. They are all green, which means that my functions, all of them returned what I told them to return. That means when I go ahead now and create my program, I know my functions are working. Me, that's, me, that's, that's the point. <laughs> let me convert this into something that to me, I think my analogy is gonna make, I think it's gonna make really good sense. Right. So, so we, we both have sons roughly the same age, right? Right. They're, they're math teachers at school mm -hmm. and they make up a test. They're not gonna give out the test and then let everyone do the test and, and then, then come up with an answer. <laughs> right, exactly. No, no, no. They're going to they first... know what the answer is. Right, yeah, exactly. ahead of time. Exactly. Right. That's the most important part because if not, how would you compare, right? Like, right. Be able to compare. Perfect. Yeah, makes now, sense. Now, 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 that makes a lot of sense. But now happens that, okay, yeah, you know what? Um, there's some times that if in one of my results, 
right? If one is there, there is a YouTube link, let's say YouTube, yeah, right. YouTube dot com, whatever. Now I wanted to not only put the link, however it was, but I want taken from YouTube. Yeah. And now I'm going to make another assertion in the wiki one, just like that, just making the assertion. But now I'm expecting the YouTube link to work. What is going to happen right now is that my function doesn't take that into consideration. It should fail. So right now, if I go ahead and save this and go here, copy my stuff. Now, one of them should fail. You notice that now it failed. And now I know that my, this is when somebody says, hey, something is not working. Now I have to create my expectation. Oh, yeah, it's true. It's not working. Now I have to modify my code to right. take that into consideration. Okay, if in string, if in string, you know, uh, you know, uh, in str, uh, this type is the data href. So I have to put this down here. Data fhref. And I put YouTube. YouTube, do something. Right, so now I have something in there. I'm going to modify my data that at the end, my function is going to return what I'm expecting out here until this thing returns green. When it returns green, I know that I'm doing it right. Now, why this is good? Because at some point you're going to say, okay, let me add a new feature. Let me add something. When I add the feature, will everything break? No, I will find out right away because as soon as I make my tests, Something so, is going to come up red. So let's <laughs> actually see if, uh, you know, this, unlike most examples I gave you earlier with our kids and their math teachers, right? if a math teacher adds a new question to their right. test, it rarely is that going to have any effect on anything else. But in right. programming, we know when you add some more stuff to your, you know, your code, it's very possible they're going to interact with other things. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and, so, and, and so, breaking something. And and but here's the point: Would you, if if there was interaction, would you want the professor to be always going back and checking every answer manually? No, you would no, want you them to figure it to... once and say, "This is the answer." Like, why? Actually, I... actually, actually, what is going on is now the professor has their own test. Now the 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 government said, "Now you have to test for this." Right. Now the the right. the professor must check the, the answer first before putting it in the test, before giving it to the children. In our case, it's the same. Before I give this program to somebody else, I have to check that the thing is working. So any, pro any changes I make to my code, I just run the tests automatically and it's going to tell me, hey, that broke. So just uh, uh, let me see something. But, so but my point is also that the teacher isn't going back and rechecking all the things. Every single check. no, 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 no. It's no, not. Answer. No, no, exactly. And that's the beautiful doing, thing about your approach is, hey, right now it should. So everything is green, right? Yep. Now say that at some point I say, hey, instead of doing a link minus one, I don't know what that is. Let me just remove that. I just remove that from my thing thinking that I did a good thing because, yeah. you know, I didn't understand why the minus one in there, right? Sure. So th this is a mistake. You should use a index, right. right? That's good. Okay, fine. Now let's run this again. Now everything should break. You see? Now some of them failed. This one didn't really fail because it, it whatever change I made right. is not really breaking it. Right. But notice that the other things broke. Oh, hey, I cannot do that. I have to go back and put my minus one in there because it looks like it's needed for something. Okay. So I cannot do that. That's what it helps me with, especially when the program is really complex. And I do some minor modifications. I don't know. It's going to break something somewhere else, but my tests are going to help me on that. But as soon as you understand tests are just having a result and just comparing your method to the result that you're expecting and adding many of them. You can add different type of things in here. Sure. You know, you can make different type of assertions. The program automatically checks for each assertion. And if it is correct, it will all come green. If it is not, something is going to be red. That's the idea awesome. behind 
test driven development cool thanks ma'am yeah i'll um in the link on the page right now you see that's the the link that lexicos uses in yeah. what he's testing and developing things around auto hotkey um i know you've you've used it for stuff too right it's a it's just a great approach to be much more robust in as soon as you start time. yeah as soon as you start making programs that are a little bit complex i would definitely recommend you checking your functions if yeah. you're just doing one-time thing or it's just, yeah. just simple code don't don't bother with this because this is right. just adding complexities but if it is something that you're gonna give to other people that was the one i was gonna say was i think it's both is it's how complex is it and then am i giving it outside of my environment where things might go crazy hey you know what yeah, yeah that it cool. takes it ta it it will save you a lot of time later on down the yeah. line well and the egg on the face kind of like oh oh yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> i gotta do this because everything else is gonna break that's all <laughs> awesome well, thanks for that overview you're welcome cheers